so good morning, everyone. Uh, we are going to kick off with the, this morning lecture. Uh, so it's a great pleasure to have with us uh, Irina Gurevich. Uh, Irina is a full professor at the Technical University Darmstadt in Germany and also the head of the UKP lab. Uh, she has won many awards, including the Spitzen Professur by LOA, and she plays many academic roles. This includes being the VP elect of the Association for Computational Linguistics, the co-director of the Ellis NLP program, uh, a founding faculty and PI of the uh, Asian Center for Artificial Intelligence and many others. Uh, so Irina has a strong expertise in topics such as information extraction, semantic text processing, machine learning, and innovative applications uh, of NLP to social sciences and humanities. And today she's going to talk about adapters in transformers, a new paradigm for transfer learning. Thank you very much, Irina, and you're good to go. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much, Andre. It's my great pleasure to be here. And I would also like to introduce uh, Jonas Pfeiffer, whose work I am mainly presenting today. So Jonas will be... Yeah, so... Um... Hello everyone, my name is Jonas. I'm a uh, yeah, third year PhD student at the Technical University of Darmstadt. And I think Irina is back now, so I'll hand it over to her again. Thank you very much, Jonas. Um, the topic of the talk today is um, investigating different applications of um, adapters in transformers for natural language uh, processing. So this is all about uh, transfer learning, and I will present some of our recent work and an outlook um, how to use adapters in different architectures uh, in future. So my promise for today will be the following. I will first explain what adapters in transformers are. I will then um, discuss if adapters are really more efficient than normal fine tuning of large language models. Uh, then I will present um, our work on how to uh, compose multiple adapters um, for transfer learning, which we call the adapter fusion approach. And then I will talk about the Maddox approach. Um, this approach looks at how to stack modular adapters for zero shot transfer uh, to unseen uh, low resource languages. And uh, finally, uh, I'm going to talk about how to train adapters uh, with the Adapter Hub uh, framework that Jonas has developed and uh, which uh, he would hopefully also uh, demonstrate later. So uh, first of all, some um, basic everything I'm about to cover involves transfer learning in natural language processing. We only look at uh, deep neural architectures uh, in this work, specifically at the transformer architecture. And here we leverage pre-trained transformer-based models such as BERT, Roberta, XLMR, or MBERT. And these have been trained on massive amounts of textual data using mask language modeling. And uh, the transfer learning with these pre-trained models usually involves stacking a prediction head on top of the model. And usually all parameters are fine-tuned on the downstream uh, task using, for example, the cross entropy loss. So the outline I'm covering today is summarized here, and uh, I will start with some background on adapters in transformer models. So what are adapters? First, let us look uh, at fine tuning a transformer. And um, the colors I use are indicated in the left bottom corner. So when parameters are fine tuned, I will use a, a red overlay. And when they are frozen, I will use a blue overlay. So if we have a transformer, we usually fine tune its uh, weights. And we have uh, theta here, our loss function on a downstream task. In adapters, it is a bit different. Um, there we pull apart every single layer of the transformer and we add new adapter 
weights. We uh, define those uh, weights as um, phi. Uh, so the adapters are encapsulated between these transformer layers, uh, which we actually freeze. That means that we no longer fine tune the parameters of the theta transformer, but we only fine tune the parameters of the adapter phi. What do we mean by the encapsulation? What we are trying to do in general is to learn a transformation of the underlying model, which is more suited to our new tasks. For example, if we do a language model, then we fine tune the adapter, uh, for example, for English and for the catcher language. And uh, because the input representation for both adapters uh, come from the same transformer model, which is frozen, and the adapter has to adjust a representation such that the subsequent frozen layer will accept that, we assume that the adapters are roughly interchangeable. So they are stitched in between the frozen layers. Okay, but uh, first of all, uh, let's look at the general performance of adapters compared to the full model uh, fine tuning. Um, the adapters are primarily based on the work by Holsby et al. in 2019 where they show that uh, the performance of adapters is see here in this table uh, in the middle, while the adapters are much more efficient. So um, the architecture of Holsby and ours um, are similar. Um, however, they are slightly different. So uh, Holsby has two adapters at each transformer layer, which you can see here in the right part. And uh, we only have one, so our architecture is more simple while it uh, provides a similar performance as the architecture by Holsby. But uh, the messages about the efficiency of adapters are the same uh, for their work and for our uh, work. Uh, so the performance of the adapters um, turns out to be good, even if only a small number of parameters um, have to be uh, trained. To take that into perspective, uh, what we currently work with is the compression rate of 16, what you can uh, see here. And um, we use 0 0.9 million parameters and uh, the size of the resulting model is 3.5 uh, uh, MB. So storing roughly 150 tasks requires the same amount of space as the two fully fine-tuned models. So that basically allows uh, to add all your tasks in one model, uh, which is run on a single server. Um, in adapter fusion, we leverage the information from uh, multiple adapters in uh, transfer learning. And this is what I'm going to present now. This is joint work with um, co-authors uh, from my lab and uh, from the New York University. And it was presented at EACL 2021 uh, recently. So here we uh, tackle two main uh, problems uh, that exist in transfer learning, in multitask learning. Uh, we have the problem of catastrophic uh, interference. Um, that means that sharing all parameters between tasks results in a drop of performance for a subset of tasks. And the second problem of the transfer learning is the sequ in sequential fine tuning. So where we uh, fine tune the tasks uh, sequentially and that leads to the problem of the catastrophic uh, forgetting. That is, um, we forget information learned in the earlier stages of the transfer learning. Uh, to mitigate uh, these two problems, uh, we propose a new approach where we train task specific weights, that is adapters for each individual task. This way, no information can be forgotten as pre-trained weights are not overwritten 
And also tasks do not interfere because uh, each task has its designated uh, parameters, that is its designated um, adapter. And uh, then we combine the representations uh, subsequently. So again, assuming that the adapters are somewhat interchangeable, we propose an attention mechanism where given a pool of adapters, so in this case, for example, we have adapters for three tasks like NLI, sentiment analysis and common sense reasoning. We leverage a dynamic attention mechanism, which automatically learns to weight the representation of the respective uh, adapters, which are available. So we define the input to each of the adapters as the query and the output as the value and the key so that the dot product of key and query learns to dynamically weight every single adapter. And at each transformer layer, we have a set of adapters available and the model tries to automatically identify which of those adapters are most useful for the given uh, downstream task. In this seed map, we can uh, have a look at some evaluation uh, results. So um, the y-axis uh, here um, are the tasks and the x-axis are the adapters that we have um, activated. And the diagonal means that the model uses their own adapter. Um, so high uh, resource uh, tasks usually use just their own adapter and the performance is on par uh, just as a model with a single adapter. But for low resource, resource uh, tasks, it is uh, different. So the low resource uh, tasks uh, leverage uh, the high resource uh, task adapters. So for example, down here, there's um, a task called CB. And you can see here that uh, the task uh, CB uh, leverages uh, the representations of the adapters from uh, multi-NLI and Cuckoo P. Uh, so there's like a weighted average um, across this. When looking at the direct comparison uh, to the full model fine tuning, here we present uh, the performance of at first single task uh, adapters for the low resource uh, task. And we can see that there is um, a delta between fine tuning and the single uh, task adapter. And uh, for some low resource tasks, the single task adapters already perform um, a bit better. Um, however, we can see that for all of the uh, tasks, the adapter uh, fusion, um, that is when uh, we combine multiple adapters outperforms uh, the single task adapter quite significantly. So you can see the dark blue here, uh, which is significantly better than uh, the light blue. Okay, so um, in this evaluation, we can also um, look um, at the performance, uh, which is sorted for, um, uh, with the ranking of the tasks from the high resource, high resource tasks to the low resource tasks. And we have three settings, uh, full fine tuning, single task adapter and adapter fusion. And uh, we find that adapter fusion performs well, especially for lower resource data sets uh, where less than uh, 10,000 examples um, exist. And at the same time, adaptive fusion is able to maintain performance for high resource uh, data sets where it learns to activate uh, only its own um, adapter. Um, okay, this is how we can leverage the information from uh, multiple adapters in one task and let the model decide which adapters are necessary or helpful uh, to solve that task. We have uh, more results on this um, in the EACL 2021 paper, and we have also experimented with multitask adapters um, and so on. But for the sake of the time and complexity of the talk, I point you to the paper 
uh, to look at that if uh, you are interested in having more uh, details. So I would like just to point out that in general, the patterns of uh, results for multi-task adapters are the same as for the single task um, adapters. Now, uh, the next thing we are going to look at um, is uh, stacking of the adapters. So this work um, has been uh, published in EMNLP 2020 and uh, the approach is called MADEX. And uh, also this is a collaborative uh, work with the University of Cambridge and uh, DeepMind. So this is uh, about the multitask cross-lingual uh, transfer. In zero-shot uh, transfer, we usually start with training a multilingual model with a large number of languages uh, using masked language modeling. And uh, then we leverage this model, fine tune it on a task in a high resource uh, source language. And then we transfer and evaluate the model on a low resource target language. Why this is important? Because uh, creating training data, as uh, all of you know, is very expensive and the data is not available for many languages, especially for the ones that we consider low resource and where it is difficult to hire annotators or crowd workers. So um, a bunch of models um, are available for uh, multilinguality. So we have this deep ma massively multilingual models such as multilingual BERT or XLM uh, Roberta, and they achieve state-of-the-art results on cross-lingual uh, transfer. However, they suffer from the so-called curse of multilinguality. So you can see in the uh, diagram here that they perform badly on low resource languages because they cannot represent all 7,000 plus languages in a single model well, and the performance especially drops for low resource languages not covered in the training data. So this is where we propose uh, to leverage uh, these massive multilingual uh, models. And um, uh, we assume that uh, due to their being massively multilingual, they are still the best ground for transfer learning to unseen um, languages. And um, we propose Maddox, which incorporates uh, the adapters um, for languages, both seen languages like English or Chinese or unseen like Quechuan or Guarani, and uh, for the tasks like named entity recognition, COPA or SQUAD. And uh, by stacking the adapters, we assume that we can learn some word language agnostic uh, task adapters. And that allows uh, then for zero short transfer to unseen uh, languages for particular tasks. So we start first of all uh, with training uh, some language adapters, for example, English and Quechuan um, can be trained with masked language modeling on Wikipedia. And now we have two sets of language uh, adapters. And in the second uh, step, we uh, train task adapters um, like for example, for named entity recognition here, uh, stacked uh, on top of the language uh, adapter, as you can see in the uh, diagram. And uh, because in the next step, we want to replace the language adapter uh, of um, English with our target language, Quechuan, we freeze not only the transformer weights, but also the language adapter um, itself. So in this setting, we only fine tune adapter weights for the task, in this case, named entity recognition um, on an English data set. So going further um, in the next step for uh, the zero shot transfer, we replace the target lang language adapter um, sorry, the source language adapter for English with our target language adapter um, of Quechuan. And uh, during training, we pass the representation 
through the shared transformer weights into our language adapter, fine tuning the task adapter. And um, during um, inference, we replace it with our catch-on adapter. Uh, but we retain uh, the task adapter that we learned for named entity recognition based on the English data. So the idea is that because we have this language adapter stacked before, there is no need to incorporate much language specific information into the task adapter. And it is some word language agnostic. Uh, there are by now new strategies how to train the adapters we are working on. Uh, but this is uh, the first assumption that we made in uh, that work uh, back 2020. We evaluate the Maddox approach on uh, 16 uh, different languages belonging to different language uh, families. And some of them um, are covered in the pre-training. Some of them have not been seen in the pre-training. Uh, we evaluate on the named entity recognition, uh, the x -quad and the XCOPA uh, data set, but for the purpose of this talk, I only cover the named entity evaluation results. So uh, we have two baselines. The first is uh, the standard zero short learning, where we fine tune a multilingual model on the task in the source language, and we evaluate on the target language. And the second baseline is the target language uh, fine tuning, where we fine tune a multilingual model using mask language modeling on a corpus of the target language. And we fine tune a multilingual model on the task in the source language. And then we evaluate on the target language. So the named entity recognition scores um, are averaged over all 16 target languages when transferring from each source uh, language. That is uh, the columns uh, in the graph that you can see refer to the source languages. And the vertical dashed line distinguishes between languages seen in multilingual pre-training like English or unseen like uh, Catron. Um, so in these results, you can see the uh, comparison between the two baselines, which you can see in blue and uh, red. And uh, our approach, Maddox, uh, showing that Maddox is uh, compar comparatively at the same level of performance. Um, for the seen languages, it is uh, a bit better for the unseen languages and on average. Due to the second uh, baseline being very computationally expensive, um, in our evaluations on the XLMR large model and on the MBIRD model, we only look at the performance of the full model fine tuning compared to Maddox. And we find that the improvements uh, that we have through the Maddox approach are consistent when we use different uh, massively uh, multilingual models. So, in this seed map, you can see the relative F1 um, improvement uh, of Maddox over uh, standard XLMR large approach in the cross-lingual named entity recognition uh, transfer. So that means that XLMR is fine-tuned on the data of the source language and evaluated um, on the target uh, languages. And in the seed map, the Y axis is the source language and the X axis is our target language. So for example, uh, here we have the improvement of 19.7% uh, of our approach trained on English and uh, evaluated um, on the Catron uh, language. Uh, we especially can see that the top right corner of the seed map uh, gives us good uh, results because it's quite green as compared to other areas of the uh, seed map. And um, interestingly, this corresponds to the realistic scenario when we train on a high resource um, language and evaluate on the low uh, resource uh, language. So the setting where we want uh, to train a model on a low resource language like Catron and evaluate 
on English is probably kind of uh, very academic and is not very uh, realistic. Uh, so I would like to emphasize that, that our approach brings improvements in the realistic uh, scenario. And here we have the largest uh, gains. So there are some recent updates uh, also on this work uh, in a recent paper, which was available on archive, but which I unfortunately uh, cannot discuss in public at this moment. So this is one way to stack adapters for zero shot uh, transfer uh, to low resource languages. And now we also have had a brief study on the efficiency um, of adapters. So uh, this paper is called Adapter Drop on the efficiency of adapters in transformers and is currently available on archive. So um, let us first look at some uh, general training and inference statistics when comparing adapter training with fully um, fine uh, tuning um, a model. Um, overall, adapters uh, are a lot more efficient uh, than fully fine tuning a model because with adapter training, the majority of the parameters are frozen and it is not necessary uh, to back propagate uh, like shown here, uh, uh, the weights through the whole model. So because we save this one uh, direction, the model is much more efficient and we can achieve as you can see in the table, a speed up of uh, 57 to 60 percent even by using um, the adapter based model. However, at the same time, and this is shown in the lower part of the table, the uh, inference uh, becomes a bit slower by four to five percent. Um, and this is because with adapters, uh, we introduce additional um, components. So in our paper, we propose different uh, strategies how to mitigate uh, this slowdown uh, of the uh, computation. In particular, uh, we evaluate what happens if we do not include adapter components at earlier uh, layers uh, of the model. Um, in case, where multiple different predictions are required for the same sentence, we can share the representations until the first layer with adapters. And the representations um, of the sentence at that layer are then duplicated and passed through the adaptive, um, uh, through their respective adapters uh, separately. Uh, with this approach, um, we are able to considerably improve the inference uh, speed for example, if we aim to perform inference on um, eight tasks uh, simultaneously, so, sorry, I have some technical issue. So, um, for example, if we, um, aim to perform inference on eight tasks uh, simultaneously. As you can see in the table, we achieve a speed up of 7.8% for every layer, which does not have an adapter. Uh, for instance, if we set adapters only in the last six layers of a base transformer model, we achieve a speed up of uh, about 47%. When measuring the effect of dropping adapters at earlier layers, we find that if we explicitly train the model to only include adapters at certain layers, the performance only marginally uh, goes down if adapters remain in the top layers. And for most tasks, dropping the first uh, four to six adapters, as you can see here in the graphs, uh, doesn't affect performance too much. We further uh, propose so-called robust adapters where the placement of adapters can be dynamically defined uh, during runtime, depending on the current server capabilities. And this allows uh, for a trade-off between inference speed and precision so that certain guarantees can be employed for the user. In general, we can say that adapters require considerably fewer parameters than fully fine-tuned models if more than one task should be performed. And adapters can train 
faster um, and with adapted drop, uh, we are able to significantly increase the inference speed additionally while achieving on par performance with fully fine-tuned models. So now I come to talk about uh, the adapter hub and um, this is the last uh, chapter of my talk. So this is a joint work with all of the co-authors, I believe, of the previous papers uh, that I've presented. So it summarizes uh, many uh, theoretical findings in a practical uh, framework, which is built on top of the hugging uh, phase uh, transformer and is very easy, very easy to um, employ and to extend. And this is um, uh, the point in my talk where Jonas could give a demonstration of the framework. So I stop my screen sharing. The floor is yours. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you, Irina, for this uh, talk. So, um, yeah, so the adapter hub uh, framework is uh, built on top of a hugging face. So the uh, general idea is um, to make it as simple as possible to, uh, yeah, to uh, use or reuse the uh, training date, uh, the, the training scripts that you have written if you've been using the hugging face, um, uh, yeah, framework until now. And uh, I think it, we, we require roughly two additional lines of code uh, to uh, train adapters in contrast to fine tuning the entire model. So this is the entire framework that we have available um, with some additional uh, pointers. So for example, we have some quick start that uh, you can look at. Um, so if you, for example, are only interested in uh, testing some adapters that we have available, uh, you can uh, use the standard way of loading an adapt uh, a model from Hugging Face uh, and then define that you, for example, want a sentiment uh, classification head. How to find these, uh, these uh, tasks basically is what I'm going to show you in a minute. But assuming that you already know how your adapter or task uh, is called, you can just load the adapter um, with this line of code. You then say that the adapter should be activated. Um, and yeah, then, then you uh, basically, uh, this automatically loads uh, the adapter from our uh, server. And this only requires three additional um, yeah, megabytes. Um, yeah, so, so then you can immediately uh, do the same processing as in Hugging Face where you uh, classify the sentence adapter hub is awesome, which is obviously positive. Uh, for training, um, the, the setting is very similar where you uh, decide that your, um, your task is called sentiment uh, SSD2, and then you set this uh, adapter to be uh, trained. So um, that this function train adapter basically means that we're looping through all the parameters of the pre-trained transformer and freezing them and only activating um, to be the, the uh, newly introduced adapter weights to be trained. Um, we also have some quick tips around learning rate and how long these adapters should be trained. Um, and we have a lot of uh, different uh, uh, example scripts um, that incorporate some of our most recent uh, papers with collab scripts that you can check out. Um, yeah, and, and basically run immediately on your, um, uh, on, on, on Google Collab. Um, we additionally have the possibility to upload adapters. And in our explore section, we structure um, adapters for uh, tasks and for languages. So remember the Mad X paper uh, that we've uh, presented at EMNLP last year has language adapters for cross-lingual transfer. So we split um, the, the structuring into tasks and languages. And uh, the tasks uh, are then structured based on their task type. Uh, and if you, for example, then uh, look at multi-NLI, we, uh, we have um, a bunch of different architectures available. 
So this is the uh, basically the the model that the mod, uh, that the adapter was trained on. So you can pre-select that, and then uh, we also have the possibility for you to select what kind of adapter architecture uh, you would uh, like to use. Um, as we have shown previously, the performance is roughly the same. Um, and if you then select one of those adapters, we have a uh, yeah a, a, a very small um, code snippet that you can copy and paste into your code to actually load this specific adapter. Uh, we have different information about these adapters. Um, for example, the configuration. So the, this is the config file for the adapter. So how the architecture of the adapter looks like. We have the authors. So this is uh, this model was this adapter was trained by Clifton Port, uh, which is an amazing uh, student at our lab. Um, who has built many components of this adapter uh, hub. We uh, can add uh, the Twitter handle and uh, the GitHub handle so that everybody knows who has trained this adapter. And actually our, uh, our Twitter bot automatically tweets about a new adapter if it has been uploaded, linking you with your Twitter handle if you have provided it. We also have different versions. So in this specific case, we only have one version. This can be, for example, um, used if there's uh, different random seeds um, that you've tried out and uh, uh, you want to provide all of them for others to use. So you can upload multiple versions of the same adapter. We also have uh, BibTech links. Um, so uh, who trained the adapter, if there's a paper associated with that, who thought of the architecture for this adapter and the task that was trained on. So for example, the data set that was used. Um, right, the, uh, we also have uh, uh, documentation and some blog posts uh, with new releases. We have a blog post about uh, generative uh, models for sequence to sequence learning. Um, where we have a very cool collab script that allows you to write poems with adapters um, with GPT-2. So yeah, go ahead and check it out if uh, you haven't already. Um, and uh, yeah, if there's any issues, uh, we're very active on our GitHub um, repository uh, where we have amazing students that will hopefully be able to help you out. So thank you very much. Uh, thank Irina, you. Irina, so, you're on mute. Uh, we're going now to the questions. Sorry, um, not yet. Ah, okay. <laughs> My mic was <laughs> muted. I uh, did not notice that. Uh, so I no still want to summarize uh, some other related uh, work ongoing and future uh, directions to finalize the talk. So um, some other groups have started to work on adapter-based uh, approaches. And I'd like to mention just uh, three um uh, papers there's the diff pruning paper where you no longer fine tune any weights well you do but you learn a difference uh, to your adapters in the matrix and there's the bit fit approach uh, coming from the Jorf goldbergs uh, group they propose to only fine tune uh, the bias terms and uh, the third approach is the prefix tuning by percy uh, liang's group that just trains a prefix, which is preset to any single um, input, which is also a type or a kind of adapter. So there are still many uh, open questions. Of course, uh, we have proposed a simple and straightforward way of combining representations, but there are definitely, definitely better ways to go forward. And uh, there are domain adapters, uh, which could be explored. Um, there are hyper networks and CPGs for adapters, in particular, the U-Dapter approach from 2020. And in general, a very good research direction would be to increase the granularity of adapters. 
Um, and this can be the key to reduce uh, the storage requirements. So to summarize my talk, there are a few key takeaways. First, adapters train faster than normal fine tuning while they maintain the performance of the fully fine tuned uh, model. The adapters are modular units which can be stacked and fine tuned uh, sequentially. And this is especially helpful for zero shot transfer to unseen languages. Um, specializing the vocabulary to the target language and leveraging pre-trained knowledge generally improves performance. And the adapters can also be composed to combine information from multiple tasks for non-destructive transfer learning. With this, I thank you very much for your attention and uh, we can have hopefully a good discussion. Thank you very much, Irina and Jonas, uh, for the talk. This was a very interesting talk. There's, there's many questions in the Q&A. Uh, so I will um, ask some of them here. Um, so the first question was, um, I'd like to be sure if I understood the adapter concept correctly. Previous approaches for fine tuning a model was to freeze the sequence embedding layers and fine tuning only task specific layers that are positioned on top of BERT layers. But for the adapter approach, the fine tuned layers are positioned inside encoder block. Um, so would you, would so I, I think the question here is clarifying if this is the case, like for the adapter approach, the fine tuned layers are positioned inside the encoder blocks and not uh, um, on top of uh, BERT layers. So would you like to respond to that, Jonas? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, uh, in standard fine tuning, um, we fine tune all the weights of the transformer model. Um, I, I mean, there's been a bunch of research that tested out uh, only training a prediction head, um, yeah. Uh, on, on top of frozen weights, but the performance significantly drops. Um, we've also did some experiments on that uh, in adapter fusion, and there's a drop in performance of 10 to 15%. Um, and so adapters, uh, yeah, adapters mean that only the newly introduced parameters are fine-tuned. So those are randomly initialized and all the pre-trained weights that uh, have been trained using mask language modeling are frozen. That involves both um, the word embedding. I'm, I'm not sure if that was the question, but both uh, the word embedding layer as well as the transformer weights. Uh, there are some experiments that I've run where it isn't really important to actually fine tune the uh, word embedding layer. Uh, so the performance is quite similar if you uh, only fine tune the tr transformer weights uh, and freeze the embeddings. There are some reasons why you would want to uh, freeze the embedding layer because there's like cross-lingual stuff that you can do by freezing word embeddings. Uh, does, I hope that answers the question. So there's another technical question. How many iterations do you recommend to train the adapter model for the downstream task? Is it similar to what we do while fine-tuning the transformer model? Uh, yeah, so that, that's a very good question, um, and uh, it, it really depends. Um, you can't really uh, say that uh, out of the box because it really depends on the data set that you're using. So, for example, if you have a very, very large data set like multi-NLI, then the answer is yes. So you, you, probably, you, you can get similar performance if you train like three to four or five epochs. Um, however, if you have a very small data set, then training adapters um, requires more, uh, more update steps because you've randomly initialized new parameters and you have to fine tune all of them on a new task. So in that case, uh, it, it usually performs better if you have a uh, yeah, test out longer training time than what you would require when you fully fine tune the model. But in general, you also, we found that uh, the learning rate is also very important. Um, uh, which is uh, considerably higher with uh, adapters compared to fully fine tuning a model. Um, we found learning rates uh, of zero point, uh, one to the power of uh, uh, minus four to work well. But we also have some pointers on the adapter hub um, where we yeah, have some default uh, settings uh, that, that work very well for adapters. 
Okay, right. there is one. Um, yep, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was just going to point out the next question in the, in the mm -hmm. Q&A. So um, you said that you use the task adapter to run on English with a language adapter for Keshwa and other low resource languages. The question is about uh, if there was any geographical closeness, language relatedness, or typological similarity uh, of the high resource and low resource language pairs, which could have an effect in performance. So we uh, yes, don't have any formal awesome. study on that, right, Jonas? Uh, well, yeah, we, we it, there's no formal study on that. Whoops, I, think, I don't know what I did with the question now. Uh, uh, yeah, so the the answer is um, we did see uh, that transferring from a close language um, to a uh, to to the to the target language performs concertedly better. Um, it's uh, in a more recent paper we didn't look at into that too much in the Maddox paper, but in a more recent work. And there we found that uh, the, the closer the languages are, the better the performance is, which is quite intuitive, I guess. All right. Um, do you have any study on applying adapters to tasks outside NLP? So we don't have any. So is there any related work that does that? Uh, yeah, so adapters come from the vision domain uh, and yeah, the, the, they've, uh, they've done a lot of adapter stuff in with CNNs and and things like that. So, um, but they're uh, it's basically just the idea of adding new weights. Um, the architecture is obviously quite different to um, to how they look in in the transformer. But the general idea of adding new components to a transform uh, to a pre-trained model comes from the vision domain, where it's also quite uh, yeah working quite well. So there's a few technical questions. Uh, you know, the first one about uh, when fine tuning a task adapter on a downstream task, are the weights of the language adapter also fine tuned? And then there's a few questions by Ashutosh Kumar. I think some of them you might have answered already. There is one about uh, whether there was a study on sequence to sequence tasks. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I guess I'll just quickly go through them. Um, um, so if the language adapters are also fine-tuned, the answer is uh, no, because we want to replace them. So if we would fine-tune them, then the model would um, yeah, be a bit different. Um, so the adapter size is, uh, yeah, it's one of the um, components that is uh, quite uh, important. Um, there's a trade-off between the number of parameters that you are fine-tuning and uh, and the the performance. So if you don't have enough capacity in an adapter, then the performance uh, will will not be very good. Um, but you also want to reduce the size of the adapter, basically. So we we have a study on that with a trade-off, some hyperparameters, and we found that. Yeah, no, you know, a uh, reduction, uh, a bottleneck size of 48, which is roughly three megabytes performs quite well and maintains basically the performance of fully fine tuning the model. Um, right. Yeah, then there was a question about the adapter drop, um, why it works and uh, how many transformers were used in that experiment. Uh, yeah, I mean, the so the hypothesis why adapter drop works is stemmed from um, uh, Angela Fan's paper on layer drop, uh, who dropped dynam dynamically drops uh, a bunch of layers uh, during fine tuning to dynamically select which layer should be used and which shouldn't be used. Um, and um, the, the question is that, uh, or the hypothesis is that there are a certain nuances of language encoded in the lower layers, which um, are not that relevant uh, to be fine-tuned for some, yeah, surface, surface level tasks. And we, we found that uh, 
or Kolda, for example, which is a very linguistic task, the performance actually drops quite significantly if we don't fine tune the layers in the lower layers. Uh, uh, whereas if we have, um, yeah, basically very higher level tasks such as NLI and things like that, then the performance isn't um, doesn't drop too much uh, if we have adapters in the uh, top layers. Um, it, it was more like a study where uh, what tasks uh, see this difference in performance. Um, and it's obviously task dependent uh, as a lot of probing papers have been shown in, shown in the past. And results are quite similar to that. Okay, so the, the, there is a question. Uh, so it seems adapters are better than normal fine tuning. Uh, do you have any intuition why integrating in between transformer layers help the model better separate the data into different classes? Maybe I would add here, um, so you mentioned in the, in the end of the talk, like some of the ongoing work, uh, including prefix tuning, for example. Uh, so there, there is a lot of <clears throat> recent work using prompt engineering and techniques like that. Do we have a sense about all these, uh, you know, all these things compared with, the, uh, with using adapters? I guess the main difference is that in one case, you are uh, integrating the adapters inside the model. In the other case, it's, uh, you know, it's used as a, as, a, as a prefix or as a prompt. Any, any comments on that? Mm. So maybe the regularization effect is um, yeah. the point here. Yeah. So so we we did see that uh, the adapters have somewhat of a regularization effect. That um, the yeah basically uh, freezing the majority of the weights does. Um, perform better because uh, we don't have that much of a um, overfitting on, on the target task. I'm not sure the, I've been thinking about the uh, probing uh, 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 prefix fine tuning and um, um, uh, I ideas uh, and, and how, how GPT-2 and GPT-3 are, are basically probed, um, but I, I'm not sure if there's the direct, uh, a direct uh, re relation to, to adapters um, because we actually specify the model for the, the task uh, with, by fine tuning the entirety of the weights um, of, of the adapters. So uh, I guess that it's, uh, it's more of a, um, transformation uh, of the inner workings of the model to specify um, the model for the downstream task uh, and less of a learning uh, uh, language modeling um, kind of way of, of uh, specializing the model. Um, I, I'm not sure that there were a couple of questions. Did I forget to answer one part? Maybe you can remind me. Yeah, I think I think you you answered most of it. Um, so I that we have two minutes left, so I'm I'm going to quickly select uh, from the remaining questions, and I will leave the others in the Q and A in case you want to uh, mm -hmm. type the answers to some of them. Um, so one question was, uh, what is the linguistic, cognitive, computational, or other motivation behind the hope that the deep neural networks can disentangle the representation of the language from the representation of the task? So that language independence, task specific sub networks can be identified. The motivation behind that is, is that the question? I mean, the, the idea is that if you don't, um, if you are able to disentangle task specific information from the language, then uh, you are able to leverage this modular uh, component which is fine-tuned on the task for any language that uh, you have a module for that language for. So if you're able to completely isolate a task-specific information or a representation from the language representation, then you can stick in any single thing. Your task is completely language agnostic and you have 
um, basically, yeah, massive amounts of un un unlabeled uh, text data for a language that you can leverage to, uh, but but which is uh, arguably cheaper to get than uh, labeled task data, and uh, stick that new component and uh, on uh, together with the task adapter, and this basically. Um, or the, the motivation is to completely democratize um, any, any uh, models um, to unseen low resource languages where, uh, yeah, where English is just not the, the primary language that is spoken in those, language, in those countries. So if we're able to um, utilize the training data that we have in uh, rich countries and rich languages, and uh, transfer it to extremely low resource languages, then we'll open up basically um, all the resources that we have available in, on the internet uh, to anybody in, in the world. So this is kind of the longer term motivation why this makes sense and is, um, is something we're interested in. Yeah, I think the question was asking if there is any linguistic uh, foundation you know, to this uh, approach. So actually, I, I really don't know if it's conceptually grounded in some cognitive theory, uh, but it reminds me a lot of feature engineering <laughs> in old days, you know, because features uh, were also kind of language independent. You uh, could just use parser from a different language to extract particular features for the task. So that's kind of similar, but new style, while the features are learned from the data. So I have a quick follow-up question. Um, uh, so when you uh, described adapter fusion, uh, so where you have uh, you know a way of uh, attending to different adapters and 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 uh, pick the ones that are more useful for a task or for a language, uh, I'm wondering if like if you are working on a problem that has many tasks, like many many tasks, um, can we use this idea to you know somehow combinatorially? Take advantage of the combinatorial, the different combinations of adapters that you can make to have much fewer adapters than tasks. Is this something that you have tried at some point? Um, so, so yeah, um, I you're pinpointing one of the big problems of adapter fusion because during training we have to loop through all the adapters, and uh, this just becomes computationally inefficient um, or impossible basically to train. Uh, but we found that um, pruning is uh, very, very possible. So if you, um, yeah, basically train on sample of a few of those uh, adapters during training and uh, then learn to uh, identify which ones are activated most likely, um, then you can actually prune all adapters except two or three for inference so that it's just the mostly activated adapters. So, so that works. And that's also part of the adapter drop paper where we have some experiments for that. Okay, like I, my, I was thinking more like in, in, in terms of, uh, you know, the way distributed representations work in neural networks, right? So if adapters mm -hmm. are encoding properties of the tasks, then uh, you, you can leverage that by having much fewer adapters than tasks. Uh, maybe ah, for, right. for doing that, uh, you know, maybe it, attention is not the right uh, framework. You know, maybe there are other ways of combining adapters that could uh, leverage. Yeah, this. I, I, I guess that goes more in the direction of mixture of experts, uh, which is basically what, uh, yes, um, what's it called? Switch transformer already does on, on a similar related direction where they do it on the token level. And uh, I guess they have it uh, in the directly opposite direction. They have uh, much more experts than tasks, uh, but you could reformulate the entire thing and say, okay, um, yeah, we, we want to, def we have a multitask setting and uh, we want a mixture of set, uh, mixture of experts that the model learns to uh, select, um, which is uh, where the number of experts is smaller than the number of uh, tasks. I, I think that makes a lot of sense and uh, should be investigated. All right. Well, thank you very much. We are already past 10. This was a very interesting talk. There's still many questions open in the Q&A. So, you know, if you have the time, it would be great uh, if you could type answers to some of those questions. 
Um, and and this is it. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. So the school is going to resume uh, with the with the labs, um, and then there's going to be a, a lecture uh, in the evening by Noah Smith at uh, 5 p.m. Lisbon time. See you all uh, for for the labs and then the evening lecture. <laughs>